So hey guys, I welcome you all to HS Academy, Advancing HS Profession through Awareness. So guys, in today's video, actually we are going to discuss about the types of fuels, okay, it present in the wildland fires. It means in the wildfires or you can say in the forest fires, what are all the types of fuel are present. Now, some of you may be leaving the video now because they know that solid fuel, liquid fuel and gases fuel. But stop, before leaving that video, stop. The scenario of these fuels is totally different what you have studied in your classes. Okay, I'll tell you for that you need to watch that full video. What are all the different types of fuel that are present in a wildland fire and how they influence the fire behavior. So everything we are going to discuss in this video. But yeah, before if you are visiting to this channel, kindly subscribe it because these type of videos will be available for you on daily basis in the near future. So let's get started. Fine guys. Before going to the fuel, let me tell you one diagram because through this diagram we are going to understand everything. So see guys, this is as you know the two different types of trees are there and this is your land, this is the roots of the trees and these are small shrubs and these are the grasses. Now when we talk about the wildland fuels, they are mainly categorized into four main types. Okay, out of that first is your aerial fuels. What is that? Aerial fuels. Now aerial means what? Aerial means those who are located at a height. Generally, I told you what is the meaning of aerial firefighting, those we are doing by aeroplanes. Now, aerial fuels you can see here, these are called the aerial fuels. You can see this bush, bush or the main part where the crown type structure is there. Okay, the main leaves are there, leaves and small, small roots. Okay, so this is called a basically aerial fuel. Now, this is very dangerous guys, because as we know that in recently also we have heard about the bush fires. Okay, in the Australia, lots of bush fires are there. So that is also called a bush. The other name of that is bush. So generally those fires who are traveling from upper structure to upper structure, we can call them bush fires. And these are very dangerous because enormous amount of fuel is present over there. As you know that the maximum fuel within a tree is present on the top area of its particular structure. So that is called a aerial fuel. Okay, now the burning characteristics of that particular fuel will depend upon the moisture content, how much moisture content is there and what is the type of fuel it is because as you know that forest is very complex, different thousands of types of trees will be there, thousands of types of small small plants will be there, okay. Every plant, every tree have its own burning characteristics. So as I told you there are four types of fuels are there, out of these four fuels, three are most common in every tree but one is common to a specific tree. Okay, I will tell you. So aerial fuel can be found in any tree, whether, whether it's a banyan tree, whether it's a Christmas tree, anywhere you will go, you will get it. Second is surface fuels. After aerial fuels, that is second is surface fuels. Now, surface fuel includes your small grasses, whatever the grasses we have. Okay, as well as the broken leaves, those leaves who are broken and settled down on the low lying areas, they will be all called as surface fuels, as well as small herbs and shops, it means small small plants are there, okay, like that, these will be also be called as your ground fuels, so again this is a very dangerous, why means, see, here a specific type of fuel is present, when we talk about the bush or when we talk about the aerial fuels, specific types of leaves will be there, because we know that if it's a mango tree, so all the leaves will be of mango only, okay, there will, uh, there will not, not be any leaf of lychee tree, or banyan tree, okay, it will be mango, but here we don't know because for example this is a banyan tree, it's a Christmas tree, if some leaves are falling they got mixed there on the ground, okay, and makes a different type of fuels, okay, so we can consider in this area, in this particular area, ground area, it is a mixture basically of different type of fuels, it means lots of types of leaves are there, they are getting mixed after getting broken, after that Lots of shops are there as well as herbs are there, it means small trees are there, they are also getting mixed, so it will create a very enormous and dangerous fuel. Okay, so again it is very dangerous, this one ground fuel. Now, if we come to the next fuel, that is your surface fuel, surface fuels we have done, subsurface fuels. Okay, now what is the meaning of subsurface fuels? Surface fuel it is, aerial fuel it is, subsurface means the roots. Yeah, you have heard right, roots also have the potential to catch the fire, in the wildfire they have cast of fire multiple times, it has been reported and it has been scientifically proven. Okay, so these roots which you can see of any tree, they can cast the fire, that's why they are called subsurface fuels. Now, I have talked to you, talked to you about three major fuels, aerial fuel, surface fuel and subsurface fuels, you can find it anywhere. Okay, now one special type of fuel is also present there, that is your ladder fuels. 
Now, ladder fuels is not always present in every tree. They are present only a specific tree. For example, this is the banyan tree. So in the banyan tree, you have seen that some sort, some types of roots will be there. Roots you can call or some sort of structure is there. Means some, something will be hanging, some hangings are there. Okay, so these hangings will be called as ladder fuels and these are very special. Now, why they are special? There is a reason. So see, if any fire is there, for example, consider it may be an aerial area or it may be in surface area. So these ladder fuel have the potential to catch or transmit this fire to the adjacent or opposite area. Because if a fire is occurring on the uh, surface area, okay, if anyhow this fire catches the ladder, it means these roots. So these will be traveled like that and directly reach the aerial area, aerial fuel. And again, this can form a crown fire. Crown fire in the sense, like that fire, where the full tree is getting involvement in the fire. The structure of the crown fire will be like that. It will start, start from the surface or it may start from the aerial area and make the structure like that, like a, like a crown you can say. Okay, so these have the potential like that. So now, we have understood about fuels. What are all the types of fuels? Aerial fuels, surface fuels, subsurface fuels and ladder fuels. Now, why they are important? Why we have classified? So see guys, in the field of wildfire protection, when we talk about wildfires, so we don't have the things too much clear. Okay, lots of research still is going on about these phenomena and all. How they, because everything which you found in wildland have our own burning characteristics. It means if we are going for a fire testing of these fuels, so they will burn in a separate pattern. So you can estimate that how much time it will require to understand the burning geometry or burning pattern or burning characteristics of each and every fuel which are present in wildland fires. Okay guys, so these are the main fuels which are present in a basically wildfire. So I hope now it's clear to you. It's not a solid liquid gas. It's a basically aerial fuel, aerial fuel, subsurface fuel, surface fuels and ladder fuels. Okay, basically they will come under a solid category. You can tell that because liquid fuels are very few over there, present over there until and unless you are doing arson, arson fire and all. Okay guys, this, so this is the full analysis of this topic guys. If you like this video, press the like button as well as share with your friends and meet you in the next video till then take care.